Let's talk about women in ministry. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and, and, and women preachers. We got Christine Kane down here who talks to a billion people a year. God bless you, sister. You've blessed me so much. The funny thing is that you get that round of applause for raising this topic. In Britain now, you just get a yawn. We settled this one years ago. And, uh, I, I, I'm just trying uh, to help out my sisters, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to help out the ladies. I, I get asked this wherever I go, and I have two quite easy biblical answers. John chapter 20, Jesus is raised from the dead, and the first person he meets is Mary Magdalene. He does not say, Mary, I've got some really important news. I want you to go and get Peter because I need to tell him so that he can then go and tell everybody else. He says, <laughs> you see where this is going? Je Jesus says, Mary, go and tell my brothers, those men who are hiding at home because they're scared, go and tell them I am ascending to my father and your father. To that is the foundation of all this is, a very, this is a bishop speaking to you about Christian ministry. Go ahead, bishop. Say. That is the foundation of all Christian ministry is the news that the crucified Jesus has been raised from the dead and is now to be the Lord of the world. And it's Mary who gets to do that first. And then the, the other passage is, the other passage is Romans 16. When Paul gives the letter to the Romans, probably the most important letter ever written, who does he give it to to take to Rome? A lady called Phoebe, who is a deacon in the church in Cenchreae, which is the eastern port of Corinth. She's presumably an independent businesswoman. She's on her way to Rome. Phoebe, will you take this and deliver it to the different house churches around Rome? And almost certainly in the ancient world, the person who delivers the letter is the person who will read it out. Because she will know, because she was there when Paul was dictating it, etc. And also, this isn't absolutely certain, but it's high probability she is the first person to explain when people, what did Paul mean by that? People get surprised when I tell them that highly likely the first ever exposition of Paul's letter to the Romans was done by a Christian businesswoman from Eastern Corinth. You know, I, with those two in mind, whatever the other passages mean and they're difficult, they contain, like 1 Timothy 2, contain words that don't occur elsewhere in the New Testament, etc., Whatever those passages mean, that narrative is so clear. And to anyone in the first century, again, read the New Testament in its world. Think what those passages would mean. And I think game over. We are sharing ministry together.